Purvi and in this video we will be discussing the in-out parameters and their usage in the cloud data integration advanced mappings. As per the agenda of this video, we will be discussing about the in-out parameters and their usage with the help of a demonstration of creating and using them in a CDI advanced mapping. We will also be discussing about some of the limitations with respect to the um, advanced mappings. Moving on to the introduction, uh, the in-out parameters are persistent task variables that act as a placeholder for a value that stores a counter or a task stage. An in-out parameter can change each time a task run based on the configuration that you uh, provide in your mapping. The latest value of the parameter is displayed in the job details when the task completes successfully. The next time the task runs, the mapping task compares the in-out parameters to the saved value. And now in the next run, the newest value will be used, which was calculated in the previous run. Now in the advanced mode, string and text in-out parameters value do not change each time the task runs. So the mapping task always uses the same parameter values when the parameter has the data type string or text. The in-out parameters can also be used to update the values after each task execution. This can be done using functions like set variables, set counter values, etc. These can also be used to handle incremental data loading or parameterizing an expression. So uh, here's a simple demo uh, of updating a counter value using in-out parameters in an advanced mapping. So I have created a sample CDI advanced mapping to read from a file located on ADLS Gen 2 and to write to another file which is also located on a different ADLS Gen 2 location. So here's how we create the in-out parameters. You go on these uh, more section, uh, parameters panel, and uh, click on this plus sign for the in-out parameters. So specify the name of the parameter, the data type that you want to have the parameter uh, assigned as, defined as, uh, specify the default value, uh, the retention policy, uh, based on how you want to retain the persistence of this uh, particular in-out parameter and the aggregation type. So in this particular example, we, we are taking up uh, the aggregation as a counter. So the counter is what we will be, we want to increment on each uh, task run. So we will be selecting uh, it as count. So I've already created a parameter uh, for counter. So here's the aggregation type that I've selected as count. Okay, so uh, now since once we have defined the parameter, we need to set the value of this parameter through uh, some mapping logic. So we'll be using the expression transformation for that. So if you go to the expression here, and uh, go to the expression section. You can create a new variable or an output port, however uh, your logic is suited. Um, then uh, we can specify the um, the parameters using the values, uh, the functions like set count variable or uh, set variable, set max variable, etc. So here, since we are doing it for the counter, it is, uh, we, I have used set count variable and passed the parameter value here. So uh, if we remember, we have the uh, default value set for this parameter as zero. So now our expectation is that this value should be incremented on each subsequent run. So first mapping would be using uh, the value as zero and it will increment the value to one. And the next mapping run will use the initial value as 1 and then increment increment it to 2. So that's an expectation. So I've created a, a mapping task for this uh, where we can uh, view or edit uh, the persistent values of uh, this parameter. So the default value as we see here is uh, current value as we see here is let me refresh it.
yeah so current value is uh, set to 1 because i've already run a mapping uh, a, a while ago so uh, let's run the, this task again Uh, so it's running now. Let's wait for a while for it to finish. So uh, now the mapping is successful and we'll check whether the values are incremented or not. So let me check from the mapping task. So the initial value that we started with was 1 for this mapping. And then now the current value we see, it has uh, incremented to 2. So this is how you can configure uh, the in-out parameters in a CDI advanced job. So here are some of the limitations of the in-out parameters in a CDI advanced mode. A mapping task cannot resolve a nested in-out parameter when a parameter file updates an in-out parameter value in a mapping uh, in advanced mode. So uh, the other one we have uh, that the data cannot be previewed for the sources and the transformations when we have in our parameters in an advanced mapping. So these are the few limitations. So this was an introduction to use in our parameters with CDI advanced mappings. Please reach out to us and provide your valuable feedback. Thank you.